okay, so there was this fight on the undercard of Bam Rodriguez versus Sonny Edwards between Peter McGrail, who is a matchroom prospect from Liverpool in the United Kingdom, and Jericho O'Quinn. Now, McGrail came in with a lot of fanfare. The commentators were saying that he has a Lomachenko-esque style. Now, whenever you hear a young prospect compared to a great fighter, alarm bells already start going off in your head, or at least they do in mine straight away, because that's a lot of pressure for one. And for two, they very rarely even come close to living up to that type of praise. So it's almost like a jinx, you know, when you say he's the new this, or he's the new that, or he's got a so-and-so type style. It's like, you're cursing the guy <laughs> for failure. Please don't do that. So anyway, they were saying that Peter McGrail had this Lomachenko-esque style. Maybe that's a style that he's gone for. Maybe it's something that he has said himself, which makes it even worse in terms of the curse or the jinx. So yeah, he came in talking about the Lomachenko style and he was beating up Jericho Quinn for several rounds. He was outboxing him, certainly not even close to the level of a Lomachenko in terms of skill, but you can see where he's trying to maybe be like that, but it's really a pound shop version. No disrespect. I know he had an extensive amateur background and all that kind of thing, but we're talking about Lomachenko here. We're talking about absolute elite of the elite in the amateurs and elite in the pros as well. So he was doing his thing. He was piecing up Jericho Quinn, but Quinn was very game. You could tell he was strong. And there was a few times in the first couple of rounds where he would swing that big right hand and McGrail was able to either duck out the way or block it. But you could tell there was quite some meat on that shot. So there was danger there and danger signs right from the beginning. But I guess McGrail thought he had it all in hand. He had the angles covered. He knew when the punch was coming and he felt confident that he'd be able to step away and step to the side, slip it, block it, come back with his own. But in the fifth round, he had Jericho Quinn reeling and maybe he got a bit too greedy, went in looking for the finish, got a little bit too close and left himself exposed. And Jericho Quinn threw that right hand. It landed bang on Peter McGrail's chin and he went down hard on his face under the bottom rope. And that was all she wrote. He wasn't going to beat the count if it was 100, never mind 10. So that was the end of a very short unbeaten run for this young prospect who was just 8-0 and going in. And it will be a long road back because at this weight class, super bantam weight, there aren't that many guys who hit particularly hard. And Jericho Quinn, and look, I always say that knockout percentage isn't always an accurate reflection of how hard somebody hits, but it often gives you a general idea, okay? Now, the point I'm making here is there aren't going to be a load of massive punches in the super bantamweight division in most instances. Jericho Quinn probably isn't a massive puncher himself. The fact that Peter McGrail was knocked out with one shot in this weight class might say something not very good about his chin, about his punch resistance moving forward. And once that type of weakness has been exposed, particularly at these weights, it's usually curtains for you. And the reason I say especially at these weights, because the skill level at super featherweight is extremely high. If you're a heavyweight and you don't have a chin, if you've got height and reach over everybody and you're fighting people, and this is often the case in many heavyweight eras that are not particularly skilled, you can get away with it. See, it sounds counterintuitive because people think, well, at heavyweight, you really have to be able to take a shot. Well, not necessarily. Think about all of the heavyweight champions over the years that didn't take a particularly great shot. Tommy Morrison was heavyweight champion. He didn't have the greatest chin. Michael Mora was heavyweight champion. He didn't have the greatest chin. Vladimir Klitschko was heavyweight champion. He didn't have the greatest chin. Lennox Lewis was heavyweight champion. I don't want to say Lewis's ch chin was bad, but again, he didn't have the greatest chin. It was average, maybe. So, and I could go on, but at heavyweight, if you've got power and you've got the dimensions over a lot of your opponents, you can get by without having the greatest chin because the skill level just isn't there with a lot of fighters. And it's always been this way. Obviously, you know, there are times when the skill level in the heavyweight division is a little higher and other times when it's a little lower. But when you compare it to, let's say, the super featherweight division, it's always lower than the super featherweight division for the most part. So the guys you're going to be coming up against who have maybe spotted a weakness there in your punch resistance, they're going to have the skill to get to that chin, especially as you start stepping up in levels. So a concerning loss for Peter McGrail here in 
an entertaining fight because, again, he was piecing up Jericho Quinn, but my man came with a big right hand, knocked McGrail out with one shot. It was dramatic. It was out of the blue. It was shades of Julian Jackson. I don't want to say that a Jericho Quinn is anything like the kind of puncher Julian Jackson was pound for pound, but it had that kind of vibe about it. For those of you who are old enough to remember when Julian Jackson fought Harold Graham back in the days, he was getting pieced up by Harold Graham and then his back was to the ropes, just like Jericho Quinn's was. One right hand, Harold Graham was out for like five minutes or something. Tremendous punch. And it was somewhat reminiscent of that. So yeah, that's all she wrote. McGrail apparently wants the rematch and he was dominating. I do think this is a guy he should be able to beat if his head is right after the first fight. But again, moving forward, concerns. So let me know what you guys think in the comment section below.